Good morning, everybody. I'm getting in some mask painting before work, so I thought I would just go live since I'm in the shop. Not much is going on. It's pretty quiet. I'm not working on anything top secret, so hooray. All right. I've already based these guys out in black, so I'm going to give them a dry brush, a heavy dry brush, with a uh, flesh-colored latex mask paint mix. skin tone here as I go. It's probably the darkest flesh tone that I will put on is uh, this first layer here. These are elves and I sell them most often in six packs as opposed to individually. So I have six of these guys to paint. If you are painting masks, you know, it, it is best to paint in my opinion more than one at a time. That we're not waiting on things to dry. Uh, I can get this one dry brushed, then I can move right on to the next one so that there's no wasted time. If I if I did this, I'd have to wait a little while for it to dry before I could do the next step, and that just boy, I hate waiting. Success via impatience. Remember that. It's the morning. I'm not on a lot in the morning. Um, I do come out and I work in the shop some before I go to work, but uh, I was, I'm actually mostly testing out my connection here because I should have a faster upload speed, meaning that uh, I should not be freezing as much and my picture should not be as blurry. So I wouldn't mind some feedback on that that I can look at later. And now with, with these coats, what matters is that it's even. Um, and I just got heavier on this cheek than on this one. So I'm going to hit this cheek again. I'm not worried about brush strokes right now. You can see some up and down brush lines on that. I'm not worried about it. I have so many more coats to do that those will go away. Anytime there's lines in the sculpture, I'm trying to go across those lines, not with them so that I pick up the detail and I don't fill in that trench with paint. All these little wrinkles and stuff, those are all little trenches. And I don't want to fill in the trench with paint. <laughs> So how are things, everybody? Good morning, Ezekiel. Good morning, everybody who is watching. Good deal, Screamline. I appreciate the update. Hello, Scotland. Well, Emma, you head to school. I have to head to work eventually. And I have to leave a little bit earlier than normal because the road I live on floods out. And it's flooded out. It rained really hard yesterday. 
and so I have to go the back way. Good enough for that one. Again, this will get deeper and deeper and deeper as I go currently. I'm just putting on the very first, very first bit of color on these. Of course, I'm using my latex mask paint mix, which is one-third casting latex, one-third latex house paint, one-third um, distilled water. The distilled water is important because the there are minerals in tap water, uh, in most water, there's minerals in it, and just like plaster is a mineral, it will make the latex solidify up against it. All those little minerals floating in the water make a little bit of latex solidify. And that causes chunky plaster, I mean, chunky latex. That causes um, clogs in your airbrush. That causes your um, batch of paint that you mixed up to completely solidify. Nobody wants that, okay? Three. Hello, Michael Skullberg. Hello from Rushford. Okay, hello to you. Boy, good morning, everybody. There's more people on than I thought there would be. I thought I'd have like four or five. But what the heck are you doing on? I'm working, I'm working. This is trans world orders that are going out. So trans world, in March, people order Christmas elves for their Christmas show. Still want to get them out, you know, by June. One of the issues that happens is there is so much time between trans world and haunt season. You know, a lot of vendors get in trouble thinking they have more time than they really do. Um, I'm in a position where I have two benefits for that. One, I have a wife with a calendar brain, and she really keeps me on track. She's like, you only have, you know, 13 weekends before this, and, you know, these three weekends you're out of commission because this, this, and this. So, yeah. Okay. And again, I'm just looking for, like, a general evenness of color. That skipping of the brush, that's what I want. I don't want so much that it's a solid color, and that's why I started all the way up high in the back of the head. I want it to skip over to pop those details. If it's not skipping over, then it's filling every, it's flooding with paint. I don't want it flooded with paint.
a dry brush. I shouldn't have a really wet brush on here. So you dry your brush off a little bit before it touches your work. Okay, there we go. Again, I sell them in six packs. This is my sixth one. By the time I'm done with this, this guy should be dry enough. It's a wet day, so who knows? It rained very hard on me in Texas last night. A lot of the stuff I'm working on at work right now, I really can't show anybody, so I can't do any lives from work. And uh, I've had too many people over working on uh, Transworld orders while I'm, you know, on my shop nights. So I really haven't gone live then because when there's too many people, there's just too much chaos, and I cannot give you all the attention that you deserve. So it's not—I don't think it's a good viewing experience for you. So I don't do it. You know, unless I can focus and answer questions, uh, I think it, I don't like being on. Or focus and just talk through like this. Because I can't talk through like this when there's five people working in the shop on ten different things. Okay, you get very little color because it's going over black. But I want black down into depths. This guy's almost dry enough. If I set up a fan, it would be dry enough. Let's answer comments for a few minutes. Alien, fat alien. How do you cast latex mask if you don't have enough latex? Well, um, to fill the mold and dwell it. It's a technique called slush casting where you can just pour it into the mold and then move the mold around like a bowl so that you get a good coating on the inside. Pour it out, back into the bucket, let that dry. Then pour it in again. And I think you have to do that about three to five times to get a good thickness for a mask. Uh, thanks, Alan. You're amazing. Yes, I always base out in black. I, um, if I'm doing, because I paint for haunted houses and they want a high, they require, or they want it or not, they require a higher contrast paint job because they're going to be seen in dim light. Um, what you can get out of this kind of a paint job is separate blocks of color. You know, this is one color, this is the color, and there's black in between them. Um, that, that gives you high contrast. So, Yes. Yes, I was based out in black. That was the question. Yeah, you're going to slush cast. That's what you call it when you pour in and you roll it around. Good. I'm glad the stream of, of upload speed is a little better. Now I can get a little more serious. How do you make textures in oil-based clay? Well, the same way you make a texture in anything, you hit it with something. And that something makes an impression upon the object, depending on the texture that you want to make. Um, it will take an impression better if you warm up that clay first. So you might hold a hair dry on it or even a heat gun for a little bit. And then that little area will be very susceptible to imprinting from objects, whether that is a wire brush or you know, just a, a tool with a rounded end, a ball stylus, whatever it is, that's how you're going to get those impressions and make those textures. A series of impressions is a texture.
<laughs> okay. There we go. Happy to help, alien fat alien. Okay, I put a little more paint on. I'm gonna do a second coat, and this is going to give me, it's gonna pop it, it's gonna make it brighter. And a lot of the elves is in the base coat because of uh, just the, you know, they're not a heavy monster skin or anything like that. More paint is going to go on. It's going to stick to the paint that's already there. When you're wet painting, all you tend to do is move around the paint that you already put on. But if you're dry brushing, I'm putting a layer on top of what I have already put down, thereby making it more opaque, blocking out more of the black, and allowing more light to reflect before it ever hits the black. So now you can tell the difference between this coat and that coat. That one's a little splotchy. This one has fewer brush marks, harder to see the brush marks um, because uh, I will detail with an airbrush. Uh, right now, I am just working. Um, I'm just working with a, a chip brush, obviously, um, and I am just dry brushing. You cannot dry brush with an airbrush. Dry brushing gives you a nice high contrast look. That's a lot. I like it. And this is a little wet. Um, the uh, it is very wet out today, so I'm not dry enough really to have my second coat stick the way that I want. I need to get a fan and put a fan on it. If you like it, then you should have put a fan on it. If you like it, then you should have put a fan on it. You want it to dry, you got to put a fan on it. Where's my biggest fan? Where are any of my fans? Oh, my fans. My fans are outside because I blew them off with the air compressor the other day to help their lifespan. Well, Alan, move to Texas and we'll talk. It's always an option. Um, I, uh, it's not uncommon for me to get a couple hours of work in before I go to work. Because I get up really early now and I do yoga with the wife. And uh, we hit the mat at 5.20, so we're always done before 6. And then I'm able to you know, do all the morning stuff and then I can head to the shop. And I have to leave for work by nine to get to work by 10, so I got about an hour drive. 
You're fine with questions. Alien, fat alien. You're perfectly fine with questions. Uh, good night, Mike's Haunted Woodworks. Um, I would I would say yes. Whenever you're painting, it's a good idea to go from dark to light. Um, normally, if you, anything that's shadowed, shadows are deep. So if you are painting something, you want to have the deep stuff painted first and then paint the outside stuff because it's real easy to, you know, um, mess up by touching the nose or the cheek to get this crease painted darker if, you know, you're using dark paint on something that's already painted light. But it's easy to go over it with a lighter paint if you've got it dark first. So, yes, dark to light. It's a nice high contrast paint job. That's all. Tell you what, I, we cleaned the dust off the back of the fans, and that makes such a huge difference on how well they work. If you don't, you know, get the dust off every now and then, then the fan is really bogged up, and it does not do its job. Still here, I swear. I'm finding my ice water that I made. Mmm, delicious ice water. So this guy got generally less paint, therefore he is drier than this guy. I'm kind of showing you, but also holding you to the fan. I'll swap these two out and I'll paint over here. But you can see pretty easy the difference between one dry brush coat, two dry brush coats. And I'll do three. Just for base. And then I'll start building up you know, a look that I want. And what's good about this technique to me is that each time I do a dry brush layer, I actually do a little bit less. So I'm leaving some bits that are pure black. I'm leaving some bits that have this grayish flesh tone from one coat. And I'm also, you know, making a new lighter flesh tone coat. So I've got four shades in there already just from doing a couple dry brush coats. It makes a nice complex skin tone without having to mix it up and speckle and do all that stuff. Nothing is wrong with speckling. I had a heavy speckling phase. But I'm out of it. That's just too much work. I'm not painting for paint's sake. You know, I'm painting because I need a mask for a haunted house. Or any haunted house needs a mask, and they've asked me to make it. Now I can go back. It's real wet stuff, but I just tested the brush on top of the head. I can move it around and blend it in. Dry builds wet smears. And that's why it's building up nice layers of color. And I'll be able to look at them and just know which ones have two coats. Put the comments. Okay, so uh, Stephen Haynes. If you look up here, you will see um, I pick 13 colors every year. There's always a black, there's always an off white or close to it. But I have 13 colors each year that I use 
uh, in making my masks. And these are these are just Home Depot paint swatches. That's that's all that these are. This is, you know, you go to Home Depot and you get them, and um, I order a quart of each color of paint that I want for that year's lineup. Um, changing the colors out allows me to change things up a little bit, but this color black is the black that I use all year. It's from Home Depot. This is, this happens to be FDC slash MD slash 04, totally black from the Home Decorator collection at Home Depot. So I literally get 13 samples and I I get 13 uh, samples that I like for this year's lineup. You know, there's colors that you know you need. I need. I know I'm going to need some kind of a green. I know I, I'm going to want an orange. I'm, you know, I'm going to want you know, a gray, a mauve, a, a nice purpley color for veins and mouths and things. So there's some repetition in it. But that's the deal, yo. So yeah, Home Depot. When you mix your own paint, I'm also, I am a commercial shop. If I mixed, if I only got red, blue, yellow, black, white, you can make almost any color from that. But um, if I'm mixing colors in that way, then I can't guarantee consistency because I take masks to the show and then people will place an order on those masks and say, oh, I, I like that mask, I want to buy it. I have to use the same colors every time. If, if I didn't have to do that, if I didn't have to have any consistency, then you know that wouldn't be an issue, and I could just mix up whatever color I wanted. All willy-nilly, but I can't. Because I want to offer people consistency in my products so that they're happy with what they get. Because maybe what they fell in love with was that exact shade of orange on my pumpkin. Well, if I do my colors this way, I replicate that every time. And I just put this dry brush on on this side so it's still wet. So I can still move it around. My brush isn't wet, but that paint is wet. And I can move it around until I'm happy with the distribution, make it even. This is the one that did not dry well, but it's dry now. I'm not fighting this to get it to become, bam, flesh tone right away. I'm not fighting it to do that. I am allowing it to come up in color layer by layer. I'm painting six masks at once so I, I can let them dry a little bit in between because I have somewhere else to go and I have something else to do. If I were only painting one mask, I hate painting one mask because then you gotta do a little bit, let it dry. Do a little bit, let it dry. One of my secrets and fundamentals to working fast in making things is work dry as long as you possibly can. Because as soon as you start to work wet, you've got to wait on something to dry before you can take a next step. And that is bothersome to Mr. Pops. Bothersome, I say, is bothersome. Yeah, so these three have had a solid second coat on, and you can really tell the difference. Well, maybe this guy has not this guy had a wet first coat put on. 
I wasn't on camera, I would just move down the line. But uh, I'm trying to keep working in this one spot so that you guys are following along. At home? Or on the bus or wherever the heck you are. Pop into the shop, set an alarm on Alexa so that I can grab what I need before I have to go to work. Because it would be very easy for me to get in here and just get my head down and start working and be like, oh crap, it's 11 a.m., I'm late for work. Like, really late for work. It is a goal also to make sure all these guys are individual. So, to a degree, I don't mind difference in between their skin tones and things, not at all. Alan, are you making masks? That, that, Alan Hirsch, are you making masks? I also appreciate that you spell your name right. You don't spell it weird like that A-L-A-N. Never trust those people. And that just really, it just brings it right up in tone and color. When you're dry brushing correctly, it kind of feels like you're knocking paint off of the brush and onto the mask. It is less like you are smearing it around. It's like they bumped into each other and the brush just left a little mark. That is dry brushing, and that's how it should feel. Very cool. You're on the Frightmare. It's a good time. mix things up and paint the left side of the face first. I normally paint the right side first. Living in wild and crazy land. That's right. I'm a risk taker. I paint the left side of masks first. Checking for evenness. I don't want any, you know, I don't want that, like major brush marks to show right now. And it may look a little bit to you guys like I'm moving the brush around and nothing is happening, but I assure you it's coming up very slowly.
Oh, silicone. That's awesome. Well, Alan, my email is stiltbeast at gmail.com. So there you go. Just like the channel name is Stilt Beast Studios, my email is stiltbeast at gmail.com. paint down on my table over here. Kind of use my table as a palette. And the roughness of this paint will smooth out. The more coats I do, the more it just blends in together and homogenizes and sort of becomes one unifying paint jobby skin tone as opposed to just these streaks of color that I put on. It's almost counterintuitive to hide a brush mark by brushing it more, but that's what you do. Okay, there we go. That's another good base coat. And that is six with two coats each. So I'm going to take this first one that we did here. Now I go a little crazy. I'm going to add a little bit of white to my flesh that I have on the table. And I'm bringing up that flesh tone in color. I'm making it lighter. And that will give me another depth of color. Alan, there is a Facebook group called Latex Mask Central, which is a really nice Facebook group for mask makers. And uh, it might be cool if you join that if you're on Facebook. Um, or if you ever want to email me pictures of your sculpture to, to get my take on it. I'm not saying I'm a better sculptor than you, but I, I do have a general understanding of the process and the forms and things. So. Um, some people like my opinion on their sculptures, and some do not. My assumption is that they don't ask. I know what my next sculpt is going to be, but I haven't had time for it yet. See, I'm just putting on less of this. So much less of this is going to go on the mask because it uh, it's a it's a lighter color, it's just a stronger color. So I'm lightening it up. You can still see all those other tones in there. most dry keep right in front of the fan.
and there will be colors later where I just I, you know, I go very very light. You know that that's it. But now you see less of those scratches, way less paint brush marks. It's all blending together because I'm getting on layer after layer after layer. Oh, okay, Stephen. Um, mass class is in June, the next one. Um, tell you what, watch my Facebook tonight, and I'll post tonight of when the next class is. Uh, it, it'll, it's in June. So it, it's coming up. It's, a, you know, it's not too far away. Monster camp is what I call that. So we'll uh, we'll post that date tonight. Show you guys the difference there a little bit. I figure these guys are all up north, so they're kind of pale, you know. get the base coats probably for all of these guys done uh, this morning and then I'll probably cut off and start heading to work but then all I have to do is come back and um, do airbrush work on them and pop details like the teeth they get they get painted with white you know because you really want those teeth to pop in a haunted house mask a lot of times what makes a monster scary is its mouth, the ability to bite you. So uh, I always pop the teeth really good. I want, when I'm painting a mask, one of the things that I imagine is I imagine the, the mask being in a dark hallway. And as that monster backs up into that darkness, I want the teeth to be the last thing that you see. Um, and that is why I normally hit the teeth with a brighter white than most people because I am painting it for the haunt. I'm painting it for darkness.
Okay. I now think one, 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 one. this guy is a different color tone. He hasn't been done yet. Even though he's got a lot of paint on him. He has not been dry brushed yet. And I can just tell because he has a tan compared to this guy. Seems like I mixed up just enough of this uh, white and flesh color. Check under my nose is because I, I haven't done these guys under nose since the first coat. I'm going to go ahead and just check all of them. Be thorough. You don't want parts that should be painted and are not. Uh, one of the things I have to think about is I make a lot of stilt costumes. So people look up at a stilt costume. I don't want the bottom of that nose, the bottom of that chin to not be painted. As always, clean off the paintbrush. I use my pants. Maybe I can save this brush for uh, next time if I just rub the paint out a little bit on my pants. So I got the basing out of six masks done before work. Well, they were based out with black and then I did all the dry brushing on them. Next is the easy part, you know, you uh, airbrush in some shading, maybe some veins, paint the gums, paint the teeth. You done, sucker. All right, it is early, so you have way more time. Am I going to do a new Krampus this coming Christmas? Probably. I do a lot of Krampuses, so I make a lot of Krampuses. As I was saying...